Yes guys, welcome down to the channel, Andy Cards here. Thank you very much for taking out today's video. And I'm on to the putter today for two reasons. A, it's 40% of golf and we should do a lot more. We should all do a lot more practice. I know that for myself as well. We should all definitely do a lot more practice and we should get a lot more knowledge about it. I've been doing a bit of research on some stats today and just kind of find out some interesting facts just on the general PGA Tour stats. And it was interesting to kind of see. Also to almost to see how see how bloody good they are but one of the things that strikes me the most is from coaching and the amount of golfers that three put okay now it's so easy to three put and especially out here in Dubai we play on championship golf courses day in day out and the golf courses are designed for some of the best players in the world so with that being said the greens are big they're slopey they're fast they're grainy and it's very difficult to not only understand which how much it's going to break if it's going to break which side it's going to break from but also what speed to then play the break for because it's getting the right speed into your putts is a combination of line and speed okay so just before i get this tip underway it's masters week who is going to win the masters my tip is dustin johnson comment below who do you think is going to win the Masters this week because let's be fair it does come down to this club quite a lot but it also comes down to driver approach play and wedges. Who knows, who's gonna win? Well done to Jordan Spieth, that was an amazing victory after a couple of years of struggling. Nice to see such a good guy back at the top of his game as well. But guys, comment below, who do you think is gonna win this week? The most common reason for three putts is a poor first putt. And we can all be, we can, we've all done it. We've all hit bad first putts. And it's generally because of poor reading of a green, poor understanding of speed the two combined together or a poor strike you may have read the ball you may have read the putt perfectly you may have thought you put the right speed on it but if you miss hit it from the toe or the heel you're going to lose your distance and the margin of error in putting is absolutely minute so a couple of degrees out from maybe 10 feet you're going to miss the hole by two or three feet and okay two or three feet we are going to hold it but if you've also misread it and mispaced it you're now four and five feet away which now statistically we are going to miss it PGA Tour average from around about four feet is only 70%. That's the best play in the world. So it's very important that we get it inside of that three foot radius, the first put, so we can make the second. A very famous quote in a very famous book, Harvey Pennick actually said that touch can be learnt, but touch cannot be taught. Okay, so I can teach you these elements of putting, but the only way you can get better is by practice. And that's the hard thing with putting. It gets a bit boring sometimes, doesn't it? All right, so this video is going to be set into two separate areas. How do we control the speed? How do we control the club face? And first of all, I'm going to start with how we can control the speed. And the first thing has got to be feel, visualization, understanding of how to read the greens. And that comes with practice. That comes with hours and hours of practice, if I'm being honest, or just hours and hours of playing on the golf courses, familiarizing yourself with your own greens. If you play the same course every time, then you're gonna to start to become more familiar with which puts are fast and which puts are slow and which kind of slopes break from certain directions. So repetition is definitely gonna help you with speed control. However, if you have the luxury of playing lots and lots of different golf courses, how can you judge speed? Well, it comes from the hours of visualization like I've already said, but also a good sound setup position. One of the key things I see is too much wrist angle and too much hip movement during the golf swing. Legs start to move, chest starts to move. We wanna be a lot more stationary over the setup. So one of the key things we're gonna try and do over setup is I like to say, get the legs out of it. So I like to see golfers that can normally, st a normal setup position would be here, but I would like to see golfers just tilt a little bit more over, give a bit more space there between the handle and the grip itself. So the handle and the legs itself, just so you've got a little bit more space. But what that's also doing is getting the legs out of the way of the stroke. Too often I see the, the hand drop in between the thighs, in quite close to the ball. And as a result, as soon as that, as soon as that uh, putter comes away from the ball, this right hip starts to extend up. So we're really gonna try and make sure that as we go in behind the ball, with plenty of distance away from the handle 
to the actual body and also one of the key things is making sure the putter head is flat to the ground too often at the most I common one i see is the toe up so if your toe is up you are potentially fiddling around too much with going to cause you to fiddle around too much with path but also make the stroke and the strike inconsistent so just like you would if you were trying to hit a seven iron you want to make sure that the quality of the strike is perfect now if i look at that put it's not bad that's actually not bad for my first attempt of the day as well i've finished it inside of around about three feet i've missed it just a little bit on the low side it's a good put Another way of controlling the speed, like I said, is the quality of the strike, making sure you do hit it out of the middle, but also the quality of the actual stroke. So we never want to see a putting stroke come away too much from the inside or the outside, or the inside or the outside on the way through the ball. Exactly the same as when you, again, relate it back to you hitting a seven iron. We don't want to see a poor path of a seven iron. We don't want to see a poor path on a putter. We don't want to miss hit a seven iron. We don't want to miss hit a putter. It's very easy to think, well, it's only a short swing. It's only a short shot. Can't be very difficult to miss the center. It is. I've spent years doing it. Um, but it's also you also think well, it can't have that much of an effect. But what it does do, it actually creates a lot more spin or it hits the ball into the ground depending on the angle of attack, which then massively affects how the ball rolls. And the longer the ball takes to get into its roll after, after the initial skid off the club face and the, and the ground, then the harder it's going to be to get your distance control because you'll find that you hit too many short and then you'll give one a good smash and it'll go too far past. So it's going to be very, very inconsistent. So going through a bit of a routine really, making sure the putter's flat to the ground, the line's going through the middle of the ball down the target line, getting the body a little bit more further away from the ball, get the legs out of play, get a bit more tilt over the golf ball, let the arms hang naturally. And one of the key things to a good tempo is the pendulum action. Just really making sure you're isolating your shoulders and your hands and your arms, making sure that it's a back and through motion. There's no leg movement. There's no side to side hip action. There's no wrist angle through the ball that's going to make the putter maybe either accelerate or decelerate. And most importantly as well, there's no action through the ball that's going to change the angle of the club face as you're hitting it as well. By the way, that was a terrible putt. I apologize. So just to expand on a point I made earlier on in terms of understanding the break, trying to visualize what's going to happen. Because as I look down towards this hole, it definitely looks downhill, it definitely feels downhill. But also as I start to do that, I see that this left side is higher than the right side. So it's definitely going downhill left to right. Tough putt as a right-handed goal for that one, to be honest. So I need to try and visualize what it's going to do. I, I, what I was taught at a young age was actually aim visually, aim straight at the hole, hit the putt dead weight and figure out where you think it's going to finish. So in this instance, the ball would finish past the hole to the right. So then I would need to almost aim short of the hole and to the left to accommodate that break. So I'm trying to visualize in my mind what this ball is going to do as it starts to go down and towards the left hand side from left to right towards the actual hole. So using my visualization, I'm actually going to be looking at a certain point now, I'd say two foot left of the hole six foot short of the hole and that's all i'm looking at now i'm hitting a straight putt so putting works in straight lines i'm going to hit a straight putt to that point that i have decided i'm going to hit to and if it's the right place then it's great that's actually where i did aim go on go on go on oh it's a good putt combination of line and speed made me get the ball very very close and most importantly from this sort of distance made me get the ball inside of three feet if i hit this ball on that exact same line but I hit it a little bit too hard. Doesn't take as much break until the end. And now it's gone eight foot past. It was a great strike. It was a good little line. I got my alignment perfect. I misread the speed. It's gone too fast. I'm probably going to three put from there. Not from there in, in total. Okay, so visualization, massively, massively important. All right, so when we're talking now about club face control, I'm going to kind of repeat something I mentioned in my previous putting video, is that, and that's the grip, because really important to kind of see the, the putter grip going through the lifeline of your hand, so making sure the main line through the middle of your palm, that's going to go on the side of the grip, okay? So what that does, it allows the putter face to work more independently up and down. When we see the putter, your standard golf grip, what that tends to encourage is the putter face starts to work up and down and side to side as it starts to move. And that's obviously something we definitely need to be avoiding. Because again, remember that 
If we if we are one or two degrees open or close from 10 feet, we're gonna miss by two or three feet to the side, depending on the slope and the speed. So if I'm now 20, 25 feet away with a downhill left to right put, I can't afford to be two or, feet, two or three degrees open at impact. So I gotta make sure I've got the grip in the right place so the face is nice and stabilized. As we mentioned before, making sure the, making sure the lower body, the legs are out of the way so I can use a nice gradual pendulum action good tempo and that one has finally made it in the oh nearly in the hole but you know what from this sort of distance is a dangerous down to down hill left to right that's another gimme Okay, one of the best drills you can do now to control the club base is called the gated drill. You can get this on pretty much any putting template where you can put two tees at the end, or quite simply, you can line it up just as I've done here, making sure that ball can get through the gate. And as a result of this now, what the idea is to make sure the putter face stays straight through impact. And if it does, I get through the gate. And if I get through the gate, I get down to my target line. And that's the key. And what you want to be trying to do from there is make this gate as small as possible. So then your margin of error obviously gets a lot smaller as well. So if from that point now, I take my setup again, if I can get it back through the gate, I can't, I've missed, okay? Massively important that we start to use little drills like this in order to teach ourselves club face control, club face understanding, and then you can, can relate that to speed control. And when you put the two together, club face control, understanding of greens, visualization, speed control, then you will 100% reduce your three puts on the golf course. But don't forget that famous quote from Harvey Pennick. You can't teach yourself this, you have to learn it, you have to practice it. So once you've got all this information, what you do with it now is the key to stopping the three puts. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do hit that subscribe button. If you're new to the channel and you've enjoyed this content, please also do hit that like button. But from me, for today, I will be back with more content. Just let me heal, but it's Masters week this week, so there's gonna be no more content until the Masters is over, because let's face it, we're gonna be glued to the TV watching Dustin Johnson win another Masters. That's my pick for this week. Guys, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again very soon.